Hello, I'm Pastor Mark of Overbrook Presbyterian Church. I'd like to invite you to spend the next few moments with me, reflecting together on God's Word. Today, we'll be looking at 2 Kings chapter 19, verses 15 through 19. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, Lord, the God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Give ear, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Listen to the words Sennacherib has sent to ridicule the living God. It is true, Lord, the Assyrian kings have laid waste these nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods, but only wood and stone fashioned by human hands. Now, Lord our God, deliver us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, Lord, are God. Hezekiah was king of Judah when this was written. And the Assyrians had just been running roughshod over other cities and other kingdoms. Their army was vast. They were strong. They were a powerful military force. And they were just invading and taking over city after city, kingdom after kingdom. And they were so confident in their power and ability, they sent a letter to Hezekiah to tell him that they were going to invade Judah and take over Judah, and that he need not think that his God was going to save them, because every country, every city they had overtaken had gods, and they had still prevailed and taken those gods and thrown them into the fire. And so Hezekiah, I think, does a very, very fascinating thing. He prays for Judah that they would be delivered. But did you notice why he said he wants Judah to be delivered from the Assyrians? He says he wants them to be delivered from the Assyrians. It's in the last verse. So that all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone are God. He's basically saying, Lord, they're talking smack about you. They're saying you're weak and you can't do anything. And more than the idea of being invaded, more than the idea of being taken over by another country or kingdom, what bothered Hezekiah was that other nations did not know that his God was the one true God. I remember when we were going on mission trips to the Dominican Republic and to Haiti, and we were going and we would go to an area, we'd partner with a local pastor, um, you know, each trip you take, there are limits to what you can accomplish. And this one church that was being used as a church and a school, some teams had gone earlier and had been able to build the exterior walls of a building so that they had a place to have a school and church meetings. But they had not had the time or the financial resources yet to put a roof on the building. So every time it rained, you know, the students got wet or the worship services got washed out. But in this particular area of Haiti, voodoo was a very popular religion. And so to try to share Christianity with people often meant not just starting with a blank slate. They didn't have any faith or any religion. They often had placed their faith in voodoo, and they viewed it as a very powerful religion. And the pastor shared with us when he 
called on us to see if it would be possible for us to put a roof on his church slash school. He said the main reason that he wanted that roof was because people that he would try to share Christianity with would laugh at him and laugh at God and say, why should we follow your God? Your God is a weak God. Your God isn't even powerful enough to put a roof on his own church. And so he just pleaded with us to come and put a roof on the church. And you would think, oh, so your worship services don't get washed out. Or, oh, so you don't have to cancel school because it rains. But all of those things were true. I mean, all of those things a roof would have affected. But his main concern was that so all the nations of the earth would know that his God was the one true God. He wanted to see God's name glorified in the placement of that roof over his church and school. I wonder how often when we pray, we have that mindset. I know I typically am just focused on, Lord, this is what I need. Lord, this is why I need it. You know, Lord, can you please help me out? Uh, this just makes sense to me and really would be helpful if, if you could come along and, and make this happen. But so seldom do I stop and step back and look and see if this prayer is answered, would it glorify God's name? And if not, then why am I really praying it? And if it would, then maybe my prayer should be focused on my heart's desire to see God's name glorified and not so much on what I happen to want or not want or think I need on a particular day. Just think of how that could alone, that one thing alone, could transform our prayer life and perhaps even change the way we begin to see God answering our prayers. Thank you for spending this time with me today, reflecting on the Word of God for the people of God.